Our story starts in the deep, dark forest where anyone wise enough will visit no more than once. In a small clearing in the heart of the forest is a hut. It is the home of a witch called Baba Yaga. It is small and rickety and stands on one chicken leg. When Baba Yaga is at home, it spins round and round and shrieks as it looks for victims for her to cook and eat. It is surrounded by a fence made of human bones. leaves her hut to go hunting, usually to find some poor soul to cook in her oven like a chicken. She flies off in her pestle and mortar, her wild stringy hair flapping behind her like long, lank ropes. However, Baba Yaga did not live alone in her hut. She had a beautiful daughter named Marinka. Marinka never really knew her father, for when she was very young, Baba Yaga felt peckish one night. 
so she pushed him into the oven, cooked him, and ate him for her supper. While Baba Yaga was out hunting in her pestle and mortar, Marinka had the job of doing all the cleaning and mending and cooking. Although she never had to cook a person, Baba Yaga always did that herself, and went about her chores as cheerfully as she could. When Baba Yaga returned, she always complained. She shouted at her and called her a lazy, useless girl. Marinka was always sad and longed for some company. She would love to have had a friend with whom she could laugh and chat, or even just sit and sew in companionable silence. She knew it could never happen though, and she would be forced to live out her miserable days in this tiny hut looking after her wicked mother. Unknown to Marinka, a young girl from the nearest village had wandered deep into the forest. Her name was Vasilisa. She lived with her stepmother and two stepsisters, who were all extremely beautiful and very proud of it. Vasilisa was not beautiful. She was certainly pretty, but her stepmother and the two sisters were always making fun of her and sending her off on useless tasks. This time they had sent her into the forest to look for a rare bird's feathers to colour their hair. Vasilisa had lost her way and had wandered too far into the forest. Suddenly, she found herself in the clearing, with the witch's hut spinning furiously on its single chicken leg. The hut 
saw Vasilisa and promptly stopped spinning and seemed to stare at her. Marinka saw Vasilisa through the window and ran out to greet her. Oh, sister, she cried, I'm so happy to see you. I'm so lonely here on my own. Come inside out of the cold, but we must think what is to be done before my mother returns, or she will surely eat you up. So Vasilisa went into the hut, and the two girls sewed and danced and laughed and combed their hair. Baba Yaga was returning, crashing through the treetops in the pestle and mortar. Vasilisa into a needle and stuck her into a piece of cloth which she put to one side. Baba Yaga barged into the hut, her red eyes gleaming, her long pointed nose clearly touching the ceiling. Tell me, daughter, she cackled, why can I smell human bones? Mother, replied Marinka, it was just an old man who had been far too tough for your teeth, so I let him go on his journey. So Baba Yaga slept. A few hours later, Baba Yaga flew off again in her pestle and mortar, and Marinka released Vasilisa from the piece of cloth. The girls carried on with their sewing, dancing, laughing and combing their hair. They didn't notice how quickly the time was passing. They were enjoying themselves too much.
Suddenly, Baba Yaga was standing in front of them. Aha! she shrieked. Just in time for tea! And she grabbed a shovel from beside the other. Now, my little one, said Baba Yaga, sit on this shovel so I can get you into this nice hot oven. Vasilisa sat on the shovel, and the witch tried to push her into the oven. But Vasilisa's feet were sticking out and stopping the shovel from going in. Stupid girl, cried Baba Yaga. Put your feet in so I can get you in the oven. So Vasilisa put her feet in, and the witch tried again. But Vasilisa's knees were sticking out this time, and still the shovel would not go in the oven. Oh, you silly little thing, said Baba Yaga. Get off and I'll show you how to sit on the shovel so I can push you into the oven. So Baba Yaga sat on the shovel, tucked in her feet and her knees, wrapped her hands around them and put her head down. Like this. As quick as a flash, Vasilisa and Marinka gave the shovel a huge push and Baba Yaga was flung into the oven. The girls hurriedly slammed the door and it shut with a loud bang. Now, of course, as everyone knows, you cannot cook a witch in her own oven, but you can keep her there for a very long time. And as Marinka and Vasilisa continued to sew and dance and laugh happily, they would occasionally hear a small voice coming from the oven. Oh, sweet girls, please let me out. It's getting awfully hot in here. But as far as I know, Baba Yaga is still in that oven to this very day. <laughs>